that bitch got there it is. There it is. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of Neighborhood Watch. I'm Matt. Hey, welcome. I'm Pat. I'm Abe. What's up, San Ramon? I'm Brett. Awesome, guys. Well, it's election season, as you all know. We've had several guests on. Tonight is special guest Joe Rube. Uh, he is running for Assembly District 16, which is uh, the heart of San Ramon. That's uh, all of our, our district for State Assembly. Uh, Joe is a Bay Area native, and he's from Alamo, where he currently lives with his wife and two daughters. He's focused on important issues uh, that voters in our district care about the most. So it's important that we talk about some of those issues in this platform this evening. Uh, Joe is a local businessman. He's been in uh, real estate appraisal business with uh, his brother for 30 plus years and is uh, someone who really cares about our local community here. So we will dive right into this and uh, get going. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Pat. You did that quite well. <laughs> so um, I can continue talking about the district or? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, why you, you can give us kind of, if you want to back up a little bit before we were, were on record and uh, talk a little bit about the area, the district, and what that encompasses, and then get into, um, you know, some of your key issues Okay. that you're really uh, trying to improve, change, make a difference on. And then what we do is probably ask questions at the end or throughout. So, No, it sounds very good. Awesome. Yes. The district goes from Arinda mm -hmm. to Livermore. So okay. Arinda, Lafayette, Moraga, 82% of Walnut Creek, Alamo, Danville, Diablo, Blackhawk, San Ramon. Mm -hmm. That's the Contra Costa side. And then it jumps over into Alameda, Dublin, Pleasanton, and Livermore. So it's the seat that was held by Captain Baker. Yeah. It's been a um, Republican seat um, for many, many years. When Catherine held it, she was the only Republican in the Bay Area. Hmm. Um, the current situation, which I think is very important to realize, is that the state the government is getting to be a one-party government. Uh, in the assembly, we have 19 Republicans and um, the, the difference would be 61 um, Democrats, wow. 80 assembly people. Um, that, that, in my opinion, is not good for anybody, not even for the Democrats. What happens in a situation like that is that the, 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 the stronger party starts going more and more to their extreme. And, 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 and the smaller, the other party is not strong enough to, to make, to make a, a challenge to them and to stop them from going um, much, much to the left. Uh, I think it's the case in, in, in my race, my opponent, a very nice young lady, um, but you look at her voting record, it is fairly, fairly um, extreme to, mm -hmm. to the left-hand side, in my opinion. Um, I have lived in this district, um, like Pat said, for over 45 years, and I think I've, um, I'm pretty more moderate to conservative, I'll put me on that, that level. Um, Catherine Baker and I um, go back 20 years. Um, Catherine, I've supported Catherine Baker on her, her runs. Um, she was our assemblywoman um, for two terms mm -hmm. and served us quite well. She, um, she asked me to run this time around to give um, our current assemblywoman a uh, run for it. Um, I think in the recent days and months, um, it's really um, changed things. We, it's become even more intense than it was. Mm -hmm. um, with the pandemic and with the social unrest, um, people are really seeing the divide between the two parties. When Rebecca and Catherine faced off in 2018, people almost looked at them as equals. Um, I don't think people are going to look at, um, in the situation now, look at myself and, and, and Rebecca as, as all that similar. I think we, we, we can go through this in more detail, but on, on many, many issues, we take opposing sides. I think that's what we need is more of an opposition party, a stronger party. Um, obviously, I want to work with, with 
anybody that wants to better the state of California and its, and its, and its constituents. But what's happened is that, that one side is not being listened to and I think everybody loses. Um, let's, take, let's take one issue um, which I'm pretty active about is um, Prop 16. That's, a, um, that's the issue, that's the proposition that's going to remove the um, Prop 209 that was uh, enacted, it's the constitutional amendment that was enacted in 1996 that did away with affirmative action. It's 30, the Prop 209 is basically 37 words that talk about um, that, that no institution should dis dis discriminate against anyone based on race, sex, national origin. It's basically word for word almost what the 1964 Civil Rights Act is. Okay, institutions should not uh, um, base their decisions, you should not give any preference to, to anybody um, based on sex, race, national origin. Um, so talking about differences in, in a situation where we've had some social strife, um, Rebecca, my opponent, voted to put this on the ballot in the middle of all of this to repeal something that I think is very fair. And, and basically, if you repeal this and you put back affirmative action, you're institutionalizing discrimination. Um, it's a discrimination maybe um, not necessarily against African Americans, maybe it's more discriminate against um, Asian Americans or, or Caucasian Americans, but it's discrimination, discrimination any way you cut it. So I think, I think an issue like that um, is very telling. Um, we can actually go down each proposition and almost every proposition you take opposing views. Um, I think it's important that we get balance in Sacramento um, and, and here's another big, big thing that we differ is sort of the, the pandemic and the handling of that. Uh, a lot of this has been handled by the governor without any kind of communication with his own party. Um, people on, on, on the other side of the aisle have been trying to, to, to stop him in doing certain things and trying to encourage him to do the, something um, that they feel is right. But he's been kind of doing it on his own. Um, and if anything is coming from um, the, the majority party, is that they want to do more lockdowns, more control. And I, I for one, think they're <laughs> being a small business owner. Um, luckily, I'm in real estate, so I haven't been locked down. I can do my job real estate and finance have been things that have been essential. Um, but I feel for the person that has a small restaurant, a small club, a small business, uh, a, a nail salon um, that hasn't been able to work. And I see that the controlling party is very much tied to unions and people that have um, government jobs that don't seem to feel the, the stress of small yeah. business. So I think it's very important that um, we look at that from that angle. Obviously, I want to be safe. Uh, I want to follow science, but um, I think it's been, um, because it's out of balance, it's been going the, the wrong direction. Um, I think, I think History will tell us very shortly that, that we were locked down. We're still locked down. <laughs> we're locked down too yeah. long. And, okay. and do you, do you, yeah. so do you feel we should open up now or in the near future? What, what, what were your thoughts on that? In the near future, let's take, let's take schools. Um, I can, big you know, issue. the big issue, and, and, and I have a 11 year old, so I'm right mm -hmm. in the middle of it. And luckily she's 11 years old and she's, great with the computer. Um, but 
I thought that they sh personally, I, in the science that I see, because my position is you take care of the elderly and, uh, and you take care of the people with comorbidities, okay? You put all your resources around them and the rest of us, we tell us to wash our hands, to do social distancing, you know, be careful. If you feel sick, stay home. I think the rest of us could handle it, handle it. And I think we would have been better off. So in my personal opinion, the school should have been, um, they should have went back before they graduated last spring, actually. And I think, I think history will prove that. But, but, but you know, um, that didn't happen. They, um, they went through the summer. Um, I know that they did a lot of surveys. And I think what, what happened is that, that the, the other side um, has, has created such a fear in the community that there's a high percentage of people that are, are afraid to go back. And so I think, um, it would, if not what I would have voted for, but I'm, um, I understand why they went back. And I understand um, in, in my school district, the San Ramon, I guess it's your school district too. Yeah, it is your school district, San Ramon Valley School District. I am good friends with Greg Marble, who, who is Danville, um, his district's in Danville on the school board. Mm -hmm. Uh, he agrees with me. He, they think they should go back as soon as possible. But I agree with what's happening is because they have such a number of people that fear to go back. They're gonna, we're going to open up in January. It, it's, a, it's sort of a, a calendar and year. Um, you know, it's a new year. I, think, I, I understand why they're doing it. But if it was up to me, yeah, they would go back. They would go and come back um, actually in the spring. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Joe, uh, with regard to our, with specifics to our district, yes. what are some of the things uh, and challenges that you see, uh, you know, facing our district? I know you talked about the, uh, the, the, the one-sidedness up in Sacramento. I think a lot of people see that, but how do you think that translates down to our district? And what are some of the main issues that you are focusing on here? Uh, within the, the San Ramon Tri Valley area. Yeah, well, well, um, you know, um, the Prop 16 is one actually. Okay. The Tri Valley Asian Association is working <laughs> with me. You'll see some of my signs. They say "No 16 mm -hmm. Rube." Those signs were, were were donated to me by by the Tri Valley Asian Group. Okay. Okay. So, and, and, and for everybody in San Ramon that has a has a child, mm -hmm. they, they may be affected by this. Yeah. Um, and um, so that is one that really hits home. Um, they all do in a certain way, the pandemic in schools, opening schools. And, and again, another thing I wanna say about the pandemic, I wish he would have used more of his staff, more of the staff of all the assembly members, did a little more research, um, you know, you know, use all the county people. It, it didn't make any sense for me to lock down all of California. That, that didn't make any sense at all. Right. And, I, and, and I, didn't, I didn't see a lot of work um, um, as far as coming out with an exit, a, a really smart plan. Mm -hmm. Just sort of politically, he, he saw it behoove him, and so he did it. A lot of decisions he make. I mean, how about one of these recent decisions about uh, banning uh, combustible engines in 2035. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how much, how many jobs are going to be lost? How many people are going to mm -hmm. be affected? How much our costs are going to rise? The cost of gas is going to rise. The cost of buying a car, running a car mm -hmm. is going to rise. The cost of moving, um, 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 moving stock, moving, moving stuff with trucks and so right. forth. We're, we're not there yet. Um, so, Joe. Yes. How do you curb the increasing costs of living in California then, you know? Yes. Okay, first thing, vote no on, on Prop 15. <laughs> okay, Prop 15 is another thing. Right. Prop 15 is gonna, is, gonna, is gonna increase taxes by $11 billion. Yeah. Okay? And it's not gonna be on our property tax yet. It's gonna be on- Keyword, yet. Yes, that's a key word. Because uh, once they get into that, they're on to us. 
but but it's on businesses and it's commercial businesses and 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 i understand the thing pretty well being in a real estate appraiser commercial commercial businesses they're they're not in it they're not people um, and we can probably make some changes but to do what they're doing right now is going to increase in one year 11 billion dollars and that is going to put businesses out of work that's going to raise mm -hmm. our cost of living right there oh yeah okay right. um good enough okay good <laughs> well we've had I've, I've seen even on uh on on local restaurants locally owned yeah. businesses signs. in a sign saying if 15 passes we're closed we're, yes. we're out so yes. you know it, it's that trickle down that it hurts the uh the guy renting that that space yeah. or the woman renting that salon or whatever. Yeah. When they're so. struggling as it is, right? I mean, mm -hmm. oh, with the pandemic, we, we lost so many businesses, so many restaurants. Um, and again, that that shows, you know, they're in a bubble. They talk about this nationally, but but Gavin Newsom is in a bubble. Um, he 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 has a lot of he has a whole big party. He has sixty one assembly people that are saying yes to most everything he does. Yeah. yeah. And actually our assemblywoman says she, she's more liberal than Gavin. She, she has voted for things that Gavin has vetoed. So, so, you know, back to what we can do, we can say, we can say enough is enough. They, that's something that they use sometimes, but enough is enough. Um, nothing personal, but I think this, this, this district, I outlined it, Orinda to Livermore, um, we're pretty middle class to upper middle class people that deserve um, somebody that has a really good business sense and a good sense of, of kind of what makes, what, what's the best for everybody. Right. Yeah. Question on uh, the difference between you and your opponent on support for law enforcement. Or how do you how do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, um, we we talked about it this little bit in the video that we did. Um, I'm a and this puts me maybe out there too much, but I want to repeal the sanctuary state law. Okay, she she wasn't in there when they voted on it, but our state senator voted on it. He voted for it, and I'm, I assume she voted for it too. Um, yeah, and, and again, I have done some emails, blasts, and people from the left have come to me and say, how could you, how could you be against the sex or any state? Um, I can't see it the other way. I, I don't know how, who can be for that. Right. Um, it, when, when they passed that law, the sheriff association actually watered it down. They wanted a more, more benefit to illegal people, illegal aliens, right? Or, <laughs> illegal, illegal alien is the is the proper term actually it's, it's the government term yeah um so they the sheriffs have watered it down um again i don't you know i don't um she is she's 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 with them she she votes that direction um i sit on the um the alamo police advisory committee and um I do everything to make sure that, that, that the policemen and that serve Alamo are well trained. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually talked to protesters and say, here, come to our meeting. And they have no desire to do that. Right. And I think, I think, and I've been asked this before, what, what, what are you going to do about the social unrest? I think that's what we have to do is we have to stand up for what's, for what is correct and, and try to dialogue a real dialogue, not a one-sided dialogue. I don't believe in kneeling for anybody. Um, and I think when we start kneeling to trying to show, hey, we're cool, we can work with you, we start to lose. And um, I have, you know, I, I, I do believe I'm a moderate person. <laughs> I, I'm not a, a white supremacist. I'm not a um, uh, extreme right winger. Um, I think I'm a, a person with a lot of common sense. Right to that, did that answer it? Or do you want to? Yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel about, uh, you know, a lot of defunding and, def and the word defunding means all different sorts of things. Yeah, no, no. Uh, make it quick. 
no defending, increase funding <laughs> yeah. to make it quick. And, 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 and I'm really surprised that, that I get to say that. I mean, I mean, 10 years ago, that would be, it would, it would be funny. You know, everybody's for law enforcement, but, but, but it's got, it's because we're one-sided, it's gone that bad. And no, definitely I will go on record. I will go on record that we, I want to fund more, you know, like, like with Alamo, um, we are going to be putting, we are looking to get another officer in, which is expensive and we're going to increase our fees for, for, to get another officer. And so not to funding, funding more. Training. Hey, hey Joe. Uh, yeah. So final question, I think for us, as, as we would try to keep this within a uh, shortened time, um, for these undecided voters, why are you the best person? If you could just summarize that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am free from even the Republican party. The Republican party, I've been a member for all my, all my years, uh, since I was 18 years old, but they are doing other races. They, they, Catherine, they put, they put a lot of money in Catherine. They don't have any money for me. So I am your guy as far as uh, a, a small businessman that has ties to nobody. Um, uh, my friends and my family have been my um, people that donated money and actually 90% of the money that I'm using is my own. And um, I am your guy to do what is right and tied to, tied to nobody. Good All right. Answer. Good answer. That's great. Oh, that's uh, oh, good. good information. Right. I think it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on and, and opened up uh, my eyes and I think our eyes too. Uh, I, am also, I, I heard you mention that at the beginning that you've known Catherine Baker for a, quite a long time. Uh, Catherine's personal friend of mine. I, I was at her uh, kickoff party when she decided to run the first time. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So she's a great, great person. She did a great job for us, but uh, she yeah, she will come back. She will come back, Patrick. Mm -hmm. um, um, she hasn't decided what she's going to do next, yeah. but she says she has one more race in her. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Joe, good and good luck in this election. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the Neighborhood Watch. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Excellent information. And tell your friends, um, that's what we need to do is we have to speak as a, as a group, as a community, mm -hmm. and say we want, we want a little change here. All right. You got it. Great information. Appreciate you, Joe. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Have All a right. good night. All right. You too. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thanks. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks, San Ramon. See you next week. Yeah.